Nyss har intervjuat Herman Kelly, president för det inländska högersinnade frihetspartiet, för att få veta mer om den aktuella situationen. Uh, thank you for being here today. My pleasure, Rebecca. Thanks for the invite. Uh, so, uh, could you briefly tell us what's happening right now in Ireland? So, on Thursday, uh, two adults and three children were stabbed by an Algerian national on a, on a, a street very close to the biggest street in, in Ireland, uh, in the centre of Dublin. Uh, one of the children and one of the adult woman is severely um, in critical condition. And uh, when news came out that it was an Algerian national who stabbed these people, there was uh, riots broke out on uh, on Thursday evening, and there was pretty serious rioting throughout central Dublin. On uh, and there was quite a lot of damage. Now it's in the context. <laughs> we, well, we we have since learned that the the Algerian migrant. He was he was supposed to be deported 20 years ago, but he had, he spent five years appealing the deportation order. He got to stay, and eventually he got uh, Irish citizenship. Uh, he was also on a charge of knife possession and damage in a car in May, and yet he got off on mental health grounds. Uh, and it's also a, just a week after the end of a criminal trial of the murder of a young, beautiful Irish guard called Ashleen Murphy. In the centre of Ireland, by a Slovak Roma, once again he stabbed her eleven times in the neck. The details came out in the in the case, which were hidden by the press, Irish press, before this. And this Slovak Roma uh, himself and his family came to Ireland, lived in Ireland for ten years, never worked a single day in his life, got a free house, free welfare, free medical care, uh, exactly like the Algerian. The Algerian was in Ireland for twenty years and never worked a single day. So these people are coming to Ireland as welfare tourists getting free stuff as best they can. And how do they thank us? By stabbing our children in the neck and, kill, and in some cases, killing them. So there is a real justified anger at, at what happened, a, a righteous anger that Irish people have every right to be ang angry at the incompetence or corruption of the Irish government to allow these large number of unvetted males coming into our country. We don't know who they are, where they're from, do they have a criminal record? Do they, do they, will they do us harm to our children? And that's not good enough. So, uh, uh, pe naturally, people have been very angry and they, from what I understand, they've stormed um, the place where this happened, the school, uh, as well as uh, the streets. And uh, Well, I don't think they, 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 was, uh, they were at the barricades where the, where the crime scene took place. I don't think they, they stormed the school. But there was quite a, a, a about 200 guys, young men, uh, rioting on Thursday night through central Dublin. There was looting as well. I don't think that was done by Irish people, but the rioting certainly was. And uh, now, I'm, I grew up in the north of Ireland during the Troubles. There's bullet holes at the side of our house, the front of our house. There used to be riots outside our, our house during the hunger strikes for about a year solid every day. So I'm well used to political violence, but I'm very, because of my experience, I'm very opposed to political violence and I've spoken against the violence. But there is certainly a righteous anger that uh, people thinking, well, why is our country, why are our children unsafe? And why are we going out to work to keep these people in an easy life? People who have never worked, it's just disgraceful, really. It is to our understanding that Ireland has previously had uh, more of a positive um, migration policy. As a result of this, is, is this going to change? Well, as members of the EU, we have EU open borders and free movement for 440 million across the EU. Our population has increased by 42% since 1995, like 3.6 million people to 5.1 million people in less than 30 years. So there's been a huge increase in population. Uh, according to the official statistics, which they admit themselves aren't accurate because illegal people who come in here illegally do not fill in census forms. But even legally, the state would say there's 20 percent of our population are non-Irish national. And many of those, to give you an example of how many people are coming in, last year, social security numbers given out to new people, there was 305,000 in total. Only 69,000 went to Irish people and 237,000 went to non-Irish people. So that's almost a quarter of a million in one year. Now, not all those people will stay, but it gives you an idea of the influx and there's a great disparity. There's 69,000 Irish people got social security numbers. There's also 69,000 Ukrainian people 
39% uh, of whom are young males, got a uh, social security number. The difference between the two groups of 69,000 is, is that Ukrainian nationals have an automatic right to uh, access to housing, to a medical card and welfare, but Irish people do not. What is that? That's unfair. P the police have pointed uh, out far-right extremists in these demonstrations. Uh, is this... Well, how, how, yeah, the police don't know. That the police are saying this. It's a very... The police commissioner is put in as a political agent. Uh, he's speaking about the political beliefs of people. It's not really his... Like, his job is to apply the law, not to talk about people's politi political beliefs. But he doesn't know what they're... These are guys going around in balaclavas and, and hoodies. He doesn't know who they are. He doesn't know what their beliefs are. Like one of, there was 33 guys charged with unrest or a fray or whatever. One of them has a completely Muslim name. How does he know his political views? I don't know his political views. But there's about 100 people who are far right in Ireland who are interested about the colour, about Jews, about the colour of people. It's a very culturally insignificant, numerically petite uh, number of people who could be classed as far right. The vast majority of people who are, are very concerned about the security, the safety of the children and the security of the country. They're just concerned parents. And look, there, there's been a huge, look, EU membership means that we are in a political union. We don't have ultimate control of our laws anymore. We have no control of, or very little control over the borders of Ireland. And even the budget in 2013, the Irish budget was seen and approved in the German, in the committees of the German Bundestag before it was even seen in Dublin. So like our national democracy has been washed away and our political sovereignty has been removed. And that's not a very nice place to find yourself about now that you don't have control of your own affairs and we don't have the right to, well, we don't have the right to control our own borders. We're no longer a proper country in the proper sense. And what we're looking for at the Irish Freedom Party, we're a nationalist, Eurosceptic party, who wants to take back control of the main things and be a normal country, control of our laws, our budgets and our borders, that we can be a normal country and that our children can be safe. And I don't think it's too much to ask. So what what uh, what could happen henceforth uh, as a result of this? Well, uh, you know what, there's been rumours that the child uh, may have died. There's ballards going up around uh, government buildings all day yesterday. So people are asking, why are they doing these very unusual security measures. Are they preparing for news to come out? I don't know. But um, there is a growing political, uh, like the Irish Freedom Party, are, there's three constituencies for the European election. In Ireland, we have three candidates. Myself, I'm, I'm also a candidate in the European election. So there will be the growth of uh, nationalist sentiment. There has been, over the last five years, it's been growing increasingly. And uh, that will, so, the future of Ireland will be more nationalist and democratic than it has been up until the last number of years, where we do have the problem in the press, as in Sweden, I, in my experience, that the press are very anti-nationalist, they're very, uh, uh, very left-wing anti-nationalist. Uh, that's also the case in Ireland, but that uh, well, we have to overcome that, and we do it through social media quite a lot. And actually, the, the experience and the events of Sweden come up a lot in Ireland. Sweden has is brought up as an example, I'm sorry to say, as a country whose example we don't want to follow when it comes to immigration because the extent of immigration is so high in Sweden and the, the crime rate, sexual assaults. We are experiencing what you've already had. So we look at Sweden and think, mm, we really don't want to go there. So I, I have been to Sweden, it's a very, very nice people, but we don't have the same experiences of immigration and criminality and sexual assault that have already occurred in Sweden. Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much.